these pressure bleeders come um, with different manufacturers' names on them, but actually they're all made in the same factory in China. So this is generic, it had no name on it. Um, I've looked at some videos on YouTube and they often leak. Um, so I dismantled this and put some silicone dielectric grease, just a little bit, on the uh, O-ring in here, the big rubber seal, and in here, um, and here. Um, the thing is then, when you do this up, just do it sort of hand tight, but don't force it, otherwise it will actually leak more. Um, and then do a leak test by crimping this line and just pumping it up with air. Um, if it's hissing, clearly you've got a leak in the system. Um, the reservoir on my American car here, it's a 65 uh, Chrysler New Yorker, is circular. So um, I couldn't actually find a plate that would fit it. So this is a, a, a chunk of, it's not Delrin, but it's similar. Um, cut circular with a slab of rubber underneath. Um, and then the fitting that came with the pressure bleed has been screwed into it using and um, thread locked in place. There was a detachable connector here. Um, it leaked brake fluid like crazy, so I just got rid of it and pushed the pipe straight on, uh, which took a bit of doing, and cable ties. And then the G clamps just compress everything up. And um, if your system maintains the pressure when you pump it up, before you open any of the bleed nipples, then you've got a fair chance, you know, that the, that the pressure bleeder isn't leaking. Um, if it holds the pressure, then go ahead and um, start opening the bleed nipples and bleeding the brakes. This is just a better view of the uh, adapter I made. Uh, you can see the... Um, the fitting that the uh, the quick connect is supposed to fit to um, was just screwed into this piece of uh, it's actually um, unexpanded polystyrene slab cut into a rough circle. I just drilled a hole in it that was slightly smaller than the thread, and then screwed it in because it's quite a soft plastic um, with some thread thread lock on it. Um, I put this little piece of tube on here. Um, so that the tip just sits beneath the level of the brake fluid in the reservoir. So instead of the fluid dripping in from this as you bleed the brakes, it sort of um, siphons in, if you like, without too many air bubbles. The, the washer is just this thick slab of it's four or five mil thick neoprene rubber. Um, you can, I just bought it on eBay as a, as a square and like that and just cut out a circle to fit. And... Um, yeah, that did the job well. In fact, that bit where the G clamps were uh, didn't leak at all. It's actually the pressure bleeder that, that leaks a bit, and you have to sort of work on the seals um, to get it to get it working properly. This is the uh, quick connect which came with the pressure bleeder. Um, the hose went in there, and this was supposed to just clip onto that fitting uh, like that. Um, when I pumped it up. Brake fluid was just like pouring out of here and the back here. Um, basically it wasn't sealing at all. So I just got rid of it and connected the hose directly to my adapter disc. Right, I'm bleeding the uh, rear brakes now. We follow the pipe down. You can see, have we got anything moving? Yes, can you see that? There we are. It's going quite briskly. So I made this. Um, this is the bottle that comes with it. What I've done is I've put a little air hole in here to let the air out as the fluid comes in. Then to stop it rotating over, um, I've just fixed it to this piece of wood with some cable ties. Uh, it means I can put a longer piece of tubing on. Uh, the connector that came with it wouldn't actually fit the bleed nipples anyway. So... Uh, as usual, I had to make my own equipment. So as soon as we stop seeing any bubbles here, I'll um, clamp that off and then the brakes will be bled.